back to another installment on Notebook Snap Basics. In this session, we're going to show you how to take two different notebooks. One is SQL Server. The other is a PowerShell notebook. Combine them together in a single project and run. And the example here will be to back up your SQL Server database and then move all of those backup files to another location, which is a really common process for people looking to keep their databases backed up and have some sort of disaster recovery in case they need to go to a different server, if they lose a server entirely, some other location to hold the backups. In order to make this happen, we have two separate notebooks. First one we're going to look at is this SQL Server Backup. And you can see that this is a single execute SQL. The execute SQL will in fact back up all the databases that are not named here. It'll put them in this particular location. And what you might notice in the syntax here is we have comments really before and after the literal, which is the backup folder. And what this notation allows us to do is run the backup interactively, if we like, or when we ingest this into the database, it'll notice that we want this to be parameter driven. So we would be able to, at runtime, provide a different value for this parameter and have it send the backup to another location. So that's this first step, and this will get you a copy of all your databases. And I can you know, run it interactively now if I just go ahead and choose a, uh, a connection and then click on Run. You can see it's going to go through, and it'll give us the details of backing up all of these. Of course, if you recall from our earlier videos, we have metadata behind this execute SQL statement. We can look at the metadata via our extension, which is edit notebook cell metadata. And you can see we've given this a name. So when we ingest it into the database, we do it in the context of this name. And we can later modify this particular name within the database. And also we're giving it a generic SQL Server connection. And we can also parameterize this. All connections are parameterized. We could say it's a different server name, a different provider, etc. And at runtime, we can give it those particular values. Okay, so this is the first one. This is execute SQL. The next thing we're going to want to do is run a PowerShell command. And so I've got kind of a general purpose commandlet notebook here. There's only one in this particular notebook. So this will copy, and you'll notice the syntax is the same. I can run this interactively, and these are just comments. But when we ingest it into the database, it knows we want a parameter for the source folder as well as a parameter for the destination folder. And it'll see these values as, as the default value for the parameter, but you can override it in case you want to copy it from a different location or to a different location. So that's really all there is to it. We do have in the SQL Server backup a project setup. You notice we were, were referencing a generic SQL Server connection. So to set this project up, all I'll need to do is to run each of these steps. So I'll go ahead and run this and make sure we have the connection that is set up. And this is where we will set up project cell row. So the project is called SQL Server Backup. And what we're going to do is we're going to reference the first notebook, which is the SQL Server Backup Project. We're going to give it the name of that cell, which you saw a minute ago. The name of that cell was Backup Databases and sequence number 100. We're, we're going to say you know, in terms of, uh, of order and then the copy is going to be sequence 200. It's just a, a simple sequence. But you can see the second step we're pulling from PowerShell utilities and we've named that cell accordingly with this copy all files in a folder to another location. I don't think I showed that, but if we go into this PowerShell commandlet, 
and look at the metadata for it. So you can see it's an execute process. Here's the name of the cell. The executable we're going to call is PowerShell. This is actually PowerShell Core. It works on Windows, Linux, etc. And the working directory, although we don't really need it for a commandlet, but generally speaking, we may choose in the future to run this out of a script that's in the file system. So that this is really an optional value. Okay. So then in order to run this, I'll hit F1, go to open forms, SQL server backup. We're going to want to run, click on the run button. We can choose a different environment. We've not defined that. We can choose a different template. We'll just use the standard. And I'll go ahead and click on run. You put the command on the clipboard. So if I hit uh, the up arrow, you can see that a bit. So it's going to invoke the runtime. Here's where we've defined the project, the template we've chosen, and the name of the project. So I'll hit enter. It'll show you all the values. So the database backup folder is right here. The source copy is going to be all the files in there. And then the destination is on a different server. And you can see the backup started and finished. Now it's in the process of copying all the files. And that has finished. And so now you can take this particular command line and put it into your favorite Windows scheduler, SQL Server agent, etc. And it will invoke the runtime, do your backup, copy, all on autopilot. Hope that was helpful. We'll have another video to show more specifics in another uh, couple of days. Thank you.